this video is just about some progress to deal with this condition called SSR is shorted. This is my 2500 watt heater and here's a solid state relay and this is another one of the TW Tade SSR 60 DDs that I thought was gonna last really well but just a short overcurrent blows it out. So the plan here is to do something about it. So as you saw in what video 188 I believe uh, I started measuring the current shunt here or taking a, uh, an input off of the uh, that current shunt that feeds this meter here it's a 75 milliwatt output at 50 amp shunt and then uh, try to amplify it using the Arduino and then write some code to uh, shut off the current just before what I think would be too much. So if you saw my video 188 about this I had rigged something up to just read the shunt feed it into A0 you know an analog input and then see how much I could uh, uh, how much resolution I could get out of it and it wasn't enough so I had to go to uh, more extremes and the, the extreme is to add an operational amplifier um, to the uh, shunt and then amplify that a bunch so that I could have a useful range of 0 to 1023 on an analog input uh, and then write some code uh, that would shut off the trigger signal to the SSR at that whatever number I chose which would relate to a certain amount of current like for instance if I think 50 amps is max uh, currently I've got my latest uh, uh, device set at to shut off at 48 amps and stay off until I remove the problem and push a reset button and we'll get to that in a minute. Very first uh, shot at this was a uh, actually a Robo Red but it's an Uno look-alike just to see if I could get some readings at all and I could sort of then I went to what you see in video 188 <clears throat> which is where I actually hooked the whole thing up uh, just measuring current and reading it out on an LCD to the 2500 watt unit you see there and there I determined I couldn't get enough high enough numbers that I could uh, reliably pick a number of amps and have that be correct every time it occurred. So then I went to an operational amplifier and I built this little guy up using an LM734N I believe which is a quad operational amplifier and that of course has a little LCD screen too that read the same sort of things and that one sort of worked. In order to uh, simulate the current shunt I needed a source that would run from zero to about a hundred millivolts and so I put together this pot here uh, and uh, just power that up with five volts and feed that uh, into the input of the op amp. Now I've got 10k in series with uh, a net roughly 200 ohm pot I didn't have a 200 ohm pot, couldn't find one, so I paralleled a 500 ohm pot with, I believe, 330 ohms, and that comes close to 200 ohms, but it's very, very non-linear, uh, tough. Anyway, that's the way that is. From a resistance standpoint, uh, you can take all the time you want and look at that non-linearity, but that's the way it is, and of course the voltage across it follows that, but it will, it will work. At any rate, using that pot as a substitute for the actual uh, shunt on the machine, I built this. I built this breadboard up, and that worked. So I thought, okay, now I've got everything I need, and wrote the code, and I had some help writing the code. There's a bunch of ifs and elses and else ifs in there, and I got a little confused and all that, so I had some help from my friend George Adams. 
and anyway we finally got that running so then I decided to package the thing up nicely here's my nice little packaged up unit and for what it's worth that's the insides and there's the back of the LCD and so on and I, that's a, a shield sitting on top of an UNO with a, a CH340G uh, USB device on it so I don't have to worry about COM ports being selected but anyway that's that and I could not get that thing to work <laughs> and I checked and rechecked my wiring and you would think for an operational amplifier I'm only using one non-inverting well, I'm, I'm only using one section of the four uh, sections in the LM734 uh, which is only three outputs you'd think that would have been easy but I had a lot of trouble with that so at any rate these are some of my sketches and reminders and so on uh, that I had to put together in order to finally get the numbers all correct and on the way I got confused enough and I know this sounds terrible that I actually had to put together another breadboard just to see if I could make a second one work. So here on just this half of the of that breadboard is another circuit and that one works. So at least I could prove to myself that I could do it more than once. So I finally went back to my packaged one and finally found what I had done wrong in there. Uh, the wires were all in the way of stuff for me seeing and so on and I finally got the resistors in the right place and now it all works. I know this is hard to read but here's how the thing works. The idea is if I turn that pot up to around 730 or something like that the current goes up to 4748 and then the red light comes on and that tells me that I have just shut the SSR off and I've reached the overcurrent setting. There we are, 47 amps. Now I turn the pot back down and the light stays on until I hit the reset button. Okay, and then I can continue doing what I'm doing and again if I have even a momentary overcurrent the light comes on which tells me the SSR is off the SSR stays off until I lower the current and press the reset button so that's how the thing is supposed to work sorry about the fact that I can't get a better shot at the, the pot the whole thing and the uh, LCD so that you can read it all at the same time so to close this short video the next uh, uh, job will be to actually hook this up to the uh, induction heater and uh, see if it does what it's supposed to do and if it's fast enough uh, uh, to save uh, the SSRs.